responsible to the commandant for all training, discipline and administrative matters pertaining to the cadets. The deputy commandant heads the training wing and monitors all training activity besides keeping himself abreast with the commandant's policies on all matters. He simultaneously ensures implementation of commandant's policies on administrative matters also. He is the principal advisor to the commandant on policy matters pertaining to the academy and coordinates matters between various wings. The commandants of Pakistan Military Academy have without exception left an enduring impact of their personality on the institution. The appointment is indeed a prestigious one. Although not directly involved with the training and administration, the commandant of Pakistan Military Academy remains the fountainhead for policies on training and administrative matters. Assisted by the deputy commandant and a competent team of staff officers at the academy headquarters, he oversees the entire range of activities at the academy and ensures that there is no compromise on quality. Do not look for approval from your superior. This is bound to come if you put your heart and soul into your job. The military training curriculum at the academy introduces the cadets to all military subjects including indoor and outdoor exercises whose knowledge is necessary in the multi-dimensional role of modern armies where conflicts are no longer confined to the traditional battlefield. The academic training curriculum seeks to broaden the horizon of the cadets by taking them through a two years bachelor's degree course that lays the foundation for higher education later in their careers. The academic wing, headed by the Director of Studies and assisted by a highly experienced team of educationists, looks after this important aspect of training. This wing has acquired ISO 9000-2001 certification and can boast of an academic record that is one of the best in the country. In the first term, the cadets are exposed to the basics. A wholesome dose of instruction and drill by highly trained drill staff culminates in the saluting test so necessary for a first-time cadet to pass in order to be eligible to all sorts of privileges like to go out on weekends and term breaks. After the platoon commander, it is the drill staff that has the most interaction with the cadets and both develop a healthy respect for each other. Military subjects like weapons training and field craft, map reading, minor tactics form a major part of the military training during the first term. Under the guidance of experienced weapons training instructors, the cadets learn to handle all types of small arms. They learn the art of using ground for concealed movement. The ability to move from one place to another with the aid of map, compass and other navigation aids is a vital ingredient of military training. At the Pakistan Military Academy, a great deal of emphasis is laid on this and cadets undergo extensive training to achieve proficiency in this field. Outdoor exercises during the first term mostly involve navigation and patrolling. Both the military and academic training demand that the cadets devote time for private study. This habit of regular study comes in useful later in their careers when they are likely to undergo a number of courses as part of their professional development. The ability to express oneself, clarity of thought and confidence are some of the qualities that the training in public speaking and debates seek to build in the cadets. From the shy and hesitant new entrant, it is a relatively confident young man who steps into the second term. He is no longer the junior most and is expected to display a degree of responsibility as well. The military training picks up pace in the second term, exposing the cadets to more advanced weapons and tactical training, map reading and other military subjects. Equipping the cadets with combat skills is a central part of the military training. The cadets are put through a series of combat-oriented activities commencing with boxing and assault course in the second term. During the third and fourth term, the cadets progress from basic to more advanced military training. They learn to handle and fire short-range anti-tank weapons and company mortars in addition to polishing their skills at marksmanship. 
Advanced tactical training consists of a series of indoor and outdoor exercises with troops in all major operations of war. The culmination of this comprehensive program of tactical training is an attack exercise with live firing and involving air force, aviation, artillery and armor as well. Combat training in the last two terms consists of endurance runs ending in assault course. The finale of this program is an exercise that tests the limits of physical and mental endurance of the cadets. Navigation marches retain importance in all terms. By the time the cadets complete the two-year course at the academy, they are expected to qualify in officer's standard map reading. A spell of adventure training during the term break does wonders for the self-confidence of the cadets. An essential feature of the third and fourth term is a greater responsibility is given to the cadets. They are now required to exercise command and control and also play an important part in grooming their juniors. Cadets with good all-round performances are awarded appointments in the platoons, companies and battalions. The assessment system 